We okay. love Julia Louis-Dreyfus. So she sat down with the Wall Street Journal magazine recently, and she hasn't spoken much about her cancer journey. No, in fact, I forgot she had cancer. Yep. Well, it's been five years, and she finished treatment for stage two cancer. And I love the things she said. You know, people always say that they get things from whatever their illness is or something you gain. Not everything's a loss. And she said, quote, I find myself living more mindfully. It's not like it's yakking at me all the time, but there's a more laser focus. Mm. I feel like anyone who's ever gone through that, that cancer trip or journey, I feel like your life does snap into focus. Yeah. It like, it's sort of like, boom, and you're like, okay, what am I doing right now? Think about if someone told you today that your life has margins. Yeah. You know where it started, and now you know where it could possibly end. I thought this when I had breast cancer years ago. I remember thinking there's a beginning and an end, and I hadn't thought of that. No. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to offload the things that are not Important. good for me, yeah. serving me, you know, working for me. And the thing that happened when I was diagnosed, I'll never forget this. I became fearless, like wildly fearless. I was always concerned. I was a pleaser. Suddenly I was like, it could be over. Yeah. And I remember it was shortly after I was diagnosed. I, there was a new hour starting here, this hour, the fourth hour. And I remember getting in the elevator at 30 Rock and hitting the 52nd floor or wherever the head yeah. honcho sat at that time. It was Jeff Zucker. I remember going up the elevator and I'm like, I'm going to ask for that job. I would never have dreamt that I was even deserving of that job. And I walked in the door and I still remember Jeff looking at me and I go, listen, I got this epiphany. You can't scare me. I've got this whole thing. And I went on some crazy, <laughs> wild speech. And when I was done, I walked out the door. I went back down the lobby. My heart was pounding. I was like, oh, my God, I did something scary. I did something scary. And I remember afterwards, with the help of Amy Rosenblum, who was working here at the yeah. time, cheering me on, I got a call. And they said, um, we have news for you. You're going to host this hour of today. And I thought, oh, my God, if I hadn't have gotten sick, yes. I wouldn't have been brave. And if I wasn't going to be brave, I wouldn't be there and I wouldn't be here. So sometimes it's like the scariest thing in the world becomes like the thing that makes you fearless. And all of a sudden, and you don't can you do feel anything. like it's how you looked at it? Like yeah. you looked at it, you weren't like, poor me. No. Gosh, why did this happen to me? And no. spend your time in sort of no. a You're right. fog of self pity. Instead, you thought, how is this going to change yes. my life for the better? Yes. I mean, it, I actually woke up out of a sleep and I was like, you can't scare me. I was like, four words. Yeah, what? Where did that come from? You can't scare me. You can't scare me. That's what I was thinking about everything. Any relationship, any because job. Because everything else was so what? hailed in comparison. Yes. And all of a sudden you feel brave. Like braver. It's like when you, if you could take, take a pill and be completely brave, yeah. what would you do right now oh. that you're scared of? That's what that gives you. It's the pill for like, just like that. I, I'm about um, to head out with my sister. Mm -hmm. And I always say this, and it's so true. It's mm. like, and I hope I'm raising my girls like this. Barbara makes me feel brave. Mm. And she's made me feel brave. And I think your sister does the same uh -huh. with you. She plants ideas mm -hmm. in your mind yes. that you might not ever say out loud to yourself. Because it was too big. Yeah. Because it feels too, mm -hmm. like, who am I yes. to say that? To say I she want that. She always made me, as a little, little kid, <laughs> she would laugh at things that were made me feel empowered. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I have a voice because you believe in me. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that we should be raising our girls. Yes. And our boys. Yes, to, and our boys. Don't no, forget how. How. To, how. How. To empower right. each other. Yes. And that's like yeah. friends, too. Yes. We want our girls to be the type of yes. girls that, like, light up. Yes. You know, she, yes. Brene Brown, and I have really gone all oh, Mel Robbins on Mila in a way that <laughs> Scary, is but hard. Good. I mean, Henry just hears me. And he, <laughs> He's like, do you think that's resonating? <laughs> but I, Mel Robbins says, I mean, Brene Brown, another yeah, one that yeah, I go, same. Brene on a Tuesday, yeah. Mel on a Wednesday. Yeah. Brene says this thing, and I'm trying to teach this to Mila, huh. that there's the candle blower outers. <laughs> They're I the people that. that if you say, oh, guess, guess what? what? I got, I got, um, I won, uh, you know, yeah. a math. Yeah. Ooh, math is so boring. Right. You guess what? I, I got student council. Student council's for nerds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. That's how she does it. That's yes. how Brene. So yeah. I tried to do the whole thing yes. with Mila, and I used a real candle, and I blew, and yeah. wax spilled yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure it resonated, but no, I tried. No, but by the way, that's exactly it. You don't want to be no. that person. The blower. No. I mean, you don't want to hang out with those people. No. Let's out of them.